hello, hello, and hi, 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 and welcome once again to a talk show Beatles podcast called Things We Said Today. This is a bi-weekly show in which we talk about whatever we feel like where the Beatles are concerned, their group years, their solo years, their music, their history, what's going on today. It's all encompassed in our show right here. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the three regular co-hosts of this show, and I do hope that you're familiar with some of my other work, uh, most notably a syndicated Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing, which in a few weeks will be celebrating its 40th anniversary on the air. Also, another bi-weekly talk show podcast on the solo Beatles called Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. And I also have my own YouTube channel devoted to conversations on the Beatles called Ken Michaels Radio. And as always, I'm being joined by my two esteemed colleagues here. First of all, a man who's been a part of New York Radio, just celebrating his 38th anniversary on New York's WFUV. And that's our own Darren DeVivo. Hey, Darren. Howdy, everyone. How you doing? Hi, Alan. Hi, Ken. Yeah, 38 years this past Saturday. February 26th, yep. 84. Yeah. We all have many milestones <laughs> between the three of us here on this show. And also we have Alan Cozen with us. You know him for many years, writing uh, for the classical department at the New York Times. And he's also authored a few Beatle books uh, from the cavern to the rooftop and also got that something, how the Beatles I want to hold your hand changed everything. Currently working on the McCartney legacy with Adrian Sinclair, which uh, hopefully will be coming out. Uh, well, we actually have a new date here, which we'll talk about with Alan. Uh, Alan, welcome. Thank you, Ken. And hello, Darren. And hello, everyone out there in podcast land. <laughs> We're going to have a fun show here. They're all fun shows. But um, because of the news about Paul McCartney going back on the road, I thought it might be great to have just a very light show here in which we talk about what would be our own dream McCartney concerts. Um, what you would like to see him do today. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with someone of the magnitude of Paul McCartney, one of the, the greatest icons in music, who's had a history now stretching how many years, <laughs> 60 plus years in music. Uh, such a tremendous catalog, Beatles, Wings, Solo, Fireman, you name it. Um, what would you like to see Paul do in concert? Um, this could be a, a concept that my co-host and I have. We're just gonna talk about what we'd like to see Paul do in concert today. And we'll talk about that more in just a few moments. But first, as we always do, we start off the show with the latest in Beatle news. And along with the news of Paul McCartney touring the U.S. for roughly six weeks from April 28th to June 16th, comes word that Paul will be headlining the Glastonbury Festival on June 25th. An insider told The Sun, Paul's set will be an absolutely must-see. He is really excited for it and is determined to put on a hell of a show packed with all of the hits. He is really, he is feeling really ready to get back out on the road in the US and then will be raring to tackle Glasto when he gets back. There was some discussion about whether he should go ahead with shows this year because of the situation with COVID, but he decided he really wants to perform. Paul is said to be performing on the Saturday night of the weekend festival, following sets from Liam Gallagher and Haim. Other artists scheduled to perform are Billie Eilish, Kendrick Lamar, and the legendary Diana Ross on Sunday. And this will hit after Paul turns 80 on June the 18th, making him the oldest artist ever to headline this festival. So it looks like this is definite. Was supposed to happen a few years ago before COVID hit, and now, Paul is keeping his word, headlining the Glastonbury Festival. Paul has added another show to his U.S. tour, and it's a second date at Fenway Park in Boston. That is definitely Allen's favorite baseball stadium in the country. We all know that. That's for June the 8th, 
And as we're doing this show on February 28th, uh, there's a pre-sale for both American Express and members of Paul's newsletter, paulmccartney.com, happening tomorrow, March the 1st. Tickets go on sale to the general public. Uh, for, uh, for that, it's this Friday, which is March the 4th. This is pretty much the same way it operated last week for all the shows uh, on the U.S. tour. American Express and members of Paul's fan club and the newsletter on one day and then for the general public on the Friday. All right, sadly, we were hit with another tremendous loss in the music industry and one with a strong Beatle connection when Gary Brooker passed away. Uh, Brooker was the lead singer, songwriter, and keyboard player for Procol Harum, known for such hits as the classic A Wider Shade of Pale, plus Conquistador, A Salty Dog, Hamburg, Pandora's Box, and others. A Wider Shade of Pale is one of the all-time classic rock songs. It's also one that Paul and Linda McCartney heard the first time they met each other. Procol Harum played at Brian Epstein's Seville Theater on June the 4th, 1967, on a bill that also included Jimi Hendrix, the Chiffons, and the electric string band with Denny Lane. Brooker's other connections with the Beatles include playing on George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album. It's believed he played on What Is Life and the Ballad of Sir Frankie Crisp. He also played on the song Writings on the Wall from somewhere in England, and Unknown Delight from George's album, Gone Trapo. Gary was also a member of two of Ringo Starr's all-star bands in 1997 and 98 with a killer lineup that also included Jack Bruce, Peter Frampton, Simon Kirk, and Mark Rivera. He also continued on the next tour in 1999, which included Todd Rundgren, Jack Bruce, Simon Kirk, and Mark Rivera. Gary honored George Harrison, uh, performing at the concert for George, where he did a fantastic version of Old Brown Shoe. Gary also released a solo album in 1982 called Lead Me to the Water. And George played slide guitar to one of its songs called Mineral Man. Tributes to Brooker have been pouring in from the likes of Ringo, who wrote online, God bless Gary Brooker, peace and love to the family. Other people like Brian May, Steve Hackett, Kenny Jones, and the family of Jack Bruce all paid tribute to Gary Brooker. Um, in an article in You Discover Music, Giles Martin offered a touching memory from his youth, saying that Gary and his wife Frankie, quote, looked after me and my sis when my parents were away. They gave so much love and warmth to us as kids. I wish I'd thanked him before he passed, end of quote. Gary Brooker died from cancer. He was 76. Any of you want to comment about Gary? I love Brokel Harum, one of the under, really underrated bands. Mm -hmm. um, if there's such a thing when you have one of the greatest songs of all time to be still considered mm -hmm. under, uh, uh, under, uh, underrated or underappreciated. Um, uh, I've just the other day was listening to a couple of anthologies and it's, you know, they, they were a great, big, great band. I mean, there's nothing more. And I know Alan, you're a fan because you were just talking about Matthew Fisher on our last right. show reviewing right. Matthew mm. Fisher's first solo album. Yeah, that was actually after the show was over. So if people are puzzled. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh that's going to be in the outtake section. Yeah. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, I really like Procol Harum. And, and uh, just to confine it to uh, Beatles uh, related um, aspects. Um, I, I have this, I don't know where I read it. It might have been in um, Derek, one of Derek Taylor's books or, or something, but I just have this sort of image of um, John in particular. Um, I think in the back of his Rolls Royce, there was a turntable. I don't know uh, oh. what the shock system on, I mean, probably pretty good on a Rolls Royce. Um, but I remember reading about him playing Whiter Shade of Pale in the turn on the turntable in his roles. So um, it's it's just one of those um, you know associations that you have that kind of never go away. So that's it. Yeah, you know, it's one of the most. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, no, I was, no, was going to say that uh, for those people, I don't know. Um, I maybe if if this show, which we're recording on Monday, is up and 
you've seen it by third. Let me try to speak English here. If uh, by <laughs> Thursday, it's going to be on Channel 13 WNET, hmm. PBS in New York City uh, area. We'll have Concert for George on Thursday night at 8. Oh, okay. oh very nice. So just, okay. I don't know. In well, definitely a wider shade of pale is one of the most cherished songs in rock history. And I was just reading that um, the 1993 Paul tour is one of the songs that he rehearsed with his band. Um, yeah. Uh, apart from the songs that I mentioned, what a voice that man had. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is watch any concerts of Procol Harum and listen to him. What a powerful voice. Um, yeah, it's really a shame. I always loved the wider shade of pale and the songs he mentioned. Salty Dog, it's a killer song loved it yeah. Uh, yeah very sad to hear about this um my apologies for not mentioning this the last week or so um eddie vetter has just released a new solo album from him which is called earthling in which ringo plays drums on one track called mrs mills which has a very beatles sound to it um it was named after a famous piano player that played at abbey road studios Mrs. Mills, and they named one of their pianos there. There was a piano that she played, um, which was made in, it's a 1905 uh, Steinway, what is it, Vertigrand? It was an upright, yeah. and it had an, an out of tune honky tonk sound to it. And apparently Paul used it when the Beatles recorded Lady Madonna. So they wanted to capture that sound on this new song. And uh, I'm guessing they didn't, they couldn't have used the real thing, the real piano, which is still there at Abbey Road. So they must have used the piano or a synthesizer that reproduced the same kind of sound on, on this song. But if you get a chance, check it out. Mrs. Mills, Ringo on drums. Yeah, very beatle song right there. Um, a correction on one of the items that I reported for the upcoming Record Store Day, April 23rd, and that is for the 12 inch of Paul McCartney's Women and Wives. According to Tom Hunyadi, my colleague over there on Talk More Talk, that's strictly a UK release. Mm. All right. I uh, wanted to make sure I said that. With special thanks to one of our listeners, Mark Zutkoff, we learned that Andrew Dixon has reported on his YouTube channel that a Paul McCartney rarity has just been released on CD for the first time. It's for the extended version of Paul's 1987 single in the UK for Once Upon a Long Ago, which was never released in the US, that song. It made the top 10 singles charts in the UK. And in addition to the regular single version, there were a few remixes called the long version, which really wasn't that much longer. It only ran for maybe 30 seconds longer than the normal single. But there was also a 12 inch version that came out called the extended edition, which runs for almost six minutes. Up until now, it only existed on vinyl. It's now on a compilation called, now that's what I call 12 inch 80s remixed. Um, it's a four CD compilation. Andrew also reported that this is not the first time this has happened uh, with the Now series. Back in 2019, as part of the Now 4 series, which in this case is a reissue of a release from 1984, they released for the first time on CD the No More Lonely Nights special dance mix. Of course, we can all ask whether or not any of these mixes will come out on Paul's remaining archival box sets. Um, certainly once upon a long ago would fit with Press to Play time-wise, No More Lonely Nights with Give My Regards to Broad Street, obviously. But again, thanks to Andrew Dixon for reporting this and to Mark Zutkoff for letting us know. For Alan the completest out there, What's Alan that? was hoping that an Uwe Le Soleil, uh, the one of the extended remixes, pops up as well. Hmm. I think they all came out, <laughs> all those remixes uh, with the flowers in the dirt box set. You know, I know Alan was really happy about the, the, what was it, the tub dub mix he was <laughs> raving about. Since I mentioned it earlier, uh, the new McCartney Legacy book, which uh, up until now, Alan's been saying, coming out October 15th. If you look on, uh, I think it's Amazon, they're saying November the 8th now. You know anything about this, Alan? No one tells me anything, you know. It's, it's just, 
the pre-order page just turned up and um, on pre-orders, we are apparently the number two Beatles book on Amazon. Um, the only one past us is uh, Paul's lyrics book. So we are actually, if you look at it, we're really the number one Beatles book under $70. I mean, we're a mere 35. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're also the number one okay. Beatles book under 50. So <laughs> anyway, so that's volume one. It's good to see actually some movement on it. They don't hmm. have the cover yet. Uh, they just have a, a blue cover with the title. Um, the cover sort of um, is in progress at the moment. But um, All right. Very good. Who's we got to keep those pre-orders coming. Hmm? Who's voicing the audio book? I don't know. I don't know. Um, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> but I would say it probably won't be me. <laughs> hmm. Let's try to get Paul to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll stop and argue with things. <laughs> uh -huh. So let's let's keep those pre-orders coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the book can be number one. Although you don't want to top Paul himself, do you? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, a new book is expected fairly soon, though we don't have an exact release date. It's called The Beatles on the Charts by Michael Ventrella. It is described as a countdown of the Beatles charting albums and singles, examining their hits, misses, successes, and failures. Both Beatles albums and their solo careers are examined. A few reminders, the Beatles in India documentary running right now on BritBox through 2026, and you'll recall our last show, only last week, <laughs> we had as a great guest on the show, Pete Compton, the co-director of the documentary. Um, it was 50 years ago today, tour starts tomorrow, and that's March the 1st, running through March the 27th. These are all East Coast dates in the US, a total of 19 concerts. Um, you've heard me mention this before. It's a superstar lineup of Denny Lane, Joey Mullen, Todd Rundgren, Christopher Cross, Jason Sheff uh, from Chicago, he replaced Peter Cetera, um, and Jay DeMarcus of Rascal Flats. It's a tribute to the Beatles albums Rubber Soul and Revolver. Half the show is Beatles music, the other half, these artists perform their own hits. Peter Asher will be back on the road with three confirmed dates, May 11th at the City Winery in Boston, May 12th at the United Theater in Westerly, Rhode Island, and at the Vogel at Count Basie Center in Red Bank, New Jersey, May 13th. More dates should be coming. You can check PeterAndGordonTheSingles.com for more information. And if you're interested in, in uh, following concerts from people who have worked with the Beatles, like Peter Asher, right now Steve Holly, the last drummer in Wings, is doing a few dates with the great young blues guitarist King Solomon Hicks, including one date at the Iridium in New York City. And don't forget the Fest for Beatle fans happening April 1st through the 3rd at Hyatt Regency on the Hudson in Jersey City. And uh, for more information about that, look at all the tremendous guests that will be there. Just go to thefest.com. All righty. That's all the news we have for you at the moment. And as I said earlier, our topic this time, it's just we're going to have some fun talking about what we'd like to see Paul McCartney do in concert. These are our dream McCartney concerts. I'm sure that some of you watching this show have thought about what you'd love to see and hear Paul McCartney do in concert. I'm sure there are a lot of songs that he's never done live before that you wish he had done. Uh, this could be any kind of concept that my co-hosts want. Um, or they can just read a set list of their own. Um, the main rule about what we're doing here is that there are no rules. If you want to, it could be all 50s rockers. It could be all Beatles songs. It could be all Beatles songs that, that Paul didn't write. <laughs> you know, we're not saying he's going to do this. 
there's a 99.999% chance that he won't. <laughs> we're, not, we're not kidding ourselves here. We're just doing this for fun. Um, but between the three of us, I thought it might be pretty cool to find out what each of us would like to see him do live for those of us who have seen him many times in concert. And for all of those who still haven't seen him or have only seen him a few times in concert. So what would be, let's start with, um, let's start with Alan this time. Hmm. What would be your idea of your dream McCartney concert? Okay. Um, so this was hard. This was harder than I expected it to be. Um, partly, you know, well, not least because the guy has so many songs that you would want to include. Um, and also, you know, if you're putting together a set list, you have to think, you know, I, I, normally you have to think about things like, you know, the, the keys the songs are in because, you know, one goes into the next differently, depending if, if you know, if the keys are distant from each other or close. Uh, um, things like what kind of song it is, you know, and um, I tried to keep in mind, I, I, I didn't really think much about the keys because I just couldn't get into sort of looking up all the keys and, you know, and seeing how it went. Um, so I just went with sort of an impressionistic set list. Um, I also want to say some things that I've left out deliberately, for instance, you know, certain things like yesterday, Hey Jude, uh, coming up. I saw her standing there. Um, these are things he's been performing all along and, you know, just to make room for some other stuff that he hasn't. Um, and yet having said that there are certain things that I did include like the, you know, uh, I'm having him end with golden slumbers through the end, which he's done. Um, but it, it's yeah. just a great ending, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And also things like, you know, I saw her standing there. I sort of thought about, you know, people uh, complaining about Ringo doing, um, you know, you're 16 at his age. It's, you know, and I saw her standing there. The girl's only 17. Paul's now 80. I love I saw her standing there. I could listen to him do it anytime. But I thought, you know, OK, we'll we'll set that one aside, um, partly on that grounds and partly because he always you know, has been doing it for quite a while. And um, hmm. anyway, so um, uh, one other thing. <laughs> it occurred to me for a while that, you know, it maybe we could do it with full albums, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there are, there are all kinds of things with, you know, one, well, I won't say what my possibilities with full albums are in case one of the two of you did. Um, so the set list I came up with um, begins with Seize the Day, um, probably my favorite song on McCartney 3, and I think it would be a good idea for him to open with some McCartney 3 stuff, that being his most recent album, um, and then mm -hmm. Find My Way and Lavatory Lil. Um, so you have a little set from McCartney 3 right at the beginning. Um, and then into Off the Ground, don't hear that that much yeah, anymore, you yeah. know. Um, and then the world tonight. Um, yes, <laughs> I, I just sort of, you know, I think the the mood of some of these pieces flow into each other nicely. Um, and then ever present past. Nice. Wow. And then from ever present past, it seemed to me maybe we should have him look at that ever present past and go back to all my loving. And I want to be your man, which I know he's, you know, done on, on tour. And, uh, but, you know, I want to be your man. Unlike I saw her standing there, it doesn't mention a woman of any given age. <laughs> so mm. anybody could sing that no matter how old they are. I figured things we said today, um, I have to admit um, he's done that a lot, but um, I included it because it's a great name of a song. <laughs> Actually, I did it and? for our podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then from there, I mean, we're keeping within the same sort of mood, eight days a week, you know, a little bit further along. Uh, then back to another sort of little solo set, um, Another Day, 
don't hear it mm -hmm. as much as it should be heard. I think I really like that song and uh, it, it deserves to be out there a bit more. Little Lamb Dragonfly, you never hear. And I love that song. Um, yes. So, and then from the same sessions, you know, I'm thinking of Little Lamb Dragonfly because of working on this book. I'm thinking of it as really a Ram tune, even though it actually was released as a Red Rose Speedway tune. Um, but from there into backseat of my car. So those to, for me are almost the two, my two favorites from all of those sessions. I mean, he recorded so much during the Ram sessions that there are a lot of things that can be favorites, but those two stand out for me. Um, then we go into a little bit of an acoustic set, starting with I've Just Seen a Face um, and I Love Her doesn't do that much so uh, oh here's another one that's never done so bad from pipes of peace oh okay mm -hmm. i love i love that song um and it really ought to have a place in this set list uh and from there you know since we're in top drawer mccartney songs and we've left out yesterday um might as well do here there and everywhere um then here I have an option of either <laughs> alternating all of Band on the Run some nights and all of Back to the Egg other nights. Back to the Egg doesn't get um, a lot of play, any of those songs. Um, True. But if not, if, if, if we don't do the full album thing, since, you know, I really have more than 25 songs here anyway, um, I would do um, Bands on the Run in Helen Wheels and spin it on an arrow through me. From there into Letting Go, we're sort of getting into a, you know, we have a very, a, a mini rocker set. So Letting Go and I've Had Enough. And we'll, we may have just had spit it on. So, so that fits in there too. Um, then take it away. Has he done that? Mm -hmm. in, I, I, I couldn't remember. Um, nope. And ballroom dancing. Here's, <laughs> here's one I'm pretty sure he hasn't done in concert. Flying to my home. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. B side of my brave face. Um, beautiful song. Um, really should have been on Flowers yeah. in the Dirt itself, we'll but, yeah. hmm? <laughs> and then, oh, hmm, I seem hmm. to have moved off the ground or, or around a bit, so it's down here again, so we'll, we'll just keep it where it originally was, uh, and then into a couple of uh, sort of social conscious ones, um, despite repeated warnings, and either looking for changes or big boys bickering. Maybe he could um, alternate those two. Okay. Uh, from there- to close to, the show, close the show with big boys bickering. Yeah, <laughs> do that. <laughs> then I have Get Back um, because seeing that this is the tour is the Got Back tour, he might as well get back. Um, hmm. And I wasn't sure where to put that, but it seems to sort of, sort of, work well as a kind of winding up towards the end and then into the golden slumbers through the end uh part of the medley from abbey road so i'd go see that <laughs> okay great selections there obviously how many songs did you count all together that you came up with if we depending if we count you know band on the run and back to the egg if he does that one I, you know uh, uh -huh. it looks like 31 nice okay you know what i was thinking was because most of the time and for quite a while when paul gives you a concert it's close to three hours and if you were to count the number of songs he does in a concert it's roughly in the neighborhood of like 35 to 37 oh. 38 mm. that kind of thing although you'd have to count like the medley from abbey road each song is a song or unless yeah, you I only counted it all that one song one. yeah um, yeah so I, I thought we were thinking more in terms of 25. And so I figured I, I'd sort of overdone it. I had, I had like a three page list um, typed mm -hmm. um, and then sort of juggled them around and got rid of, you know, some as I went, obviously, because it was way more than this. Um, so anyway, 
that's mine. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And well, I love the, the I love the uh, the deep cuts mixed around in there. Uh, mm -hmm. In a way, your 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 set is like the hardcore McCartney fans. Many of uh, the hardcore McCartney fans dream mini sets and songs and deep tracks and all kind of scattered in there. You know, when I first compiled the list, it was all solo stuff, believe it or not, being this, for me, the Beatles or, you know, the Zenith Western Civ. Um, and then it occurred to me as I started juggling those around, wait a minute, wait a minute, you can't have them not do Beatles stuff. Um, don't think you'd have them do only Beatles stuff, which kind of occurred to me as, as a possibility, but, um, but I had to then, I had to then stop halfway through and go back and make a, a Beatles list and start eliminating those. <laughs> so hmm. um, anyway, so I, I think, you know, the only thing I, I can think that, you know, he might actually do is, is, is do the um, McCartney three stuff up top. I don't know if he would start with Seize the Day, but. Um, That's a good call for an opener, though, Seize the yeah, Day. Yeah. Even if he doesn't mm. do another or maybe one other song from the album. You know, it's a good way to, you know, get his new song in, get a new song in, um, and <laughs> trap everybody and force them to stay there and listen to the new song, as opposed to go run to the uh, concession stands when he pulls out something new. He could yeah. do he could do a mini set within there as well since I, I have Lavatory Lil and I, I thought of trying to add um, my Valentine if he did Lavatory if he did uh, say either maybe I'm amazed or my love because we're now not worrying about his voice right um, mm. and then Lavatory Lil and then my Valentine he could, <laughs> he could have a wife set. Not that he's admitted that Lavatory Lil is about wife too, but you know <laughs> what? I what I list. like about <laughs> your list there, Alan, is that you seem to group the songs together in certain musical periods. In most cases, it's, yeah. very gutsy to start off the the concert with three songs from McCartney three, and I think that is clever in a way because you know you're going to have people watching right at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. but. Um, I always found it disturbing for the people that don't care as much about his new stuff or his solo stuff. Sometimes like uh, during the, the tour when chaos and creation had come out, he announced on stage, these next two songs are from my new album. And that gave some people an excuse to get up out of their seats and then, you know, go to the bathroom or whatever. So you should never really just say that. You should just go right into the songs and do them. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah, some great selections there, definitely. I, I didn't mention before whether or not we should be concerned about whether these are songs that he could do because of the state of his voice these days. This is really just our dream show. It's whatever songs you want, yeah. regardless of the voice. But if you want that to be a concern, again, that's up to you. He could always take it down a key or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible to pick a, sh a set like this with that in mind, because, you know, we've all seen him do songs that we wouldn't think he could handle, that he sounds okay. Mm -hmm. And songs mm -hmm. that, you know, you thought you would think that, oh, I'm wondering why he's struggling with this particular tune. It's not one that I thought he would struggle with. Um, so right. it's hard to kind of, and, and, and Alan, um, not to short, short change you can, but Alan, um, Ken, you're not, you, can you play an instrument, right? Yeah, I play several. Um, I played, well, basic guitar and piano right, and main, right. mainly the, the trumpet. <laughs> the two of you have some, yeah. uh, a lot maybe, uh, ability to know keys and to be able to figure out, as is now, he shouldn't be singing that or he could sing that because it's in this key, you know, where I'm tone deaf when it comes to stuff like that. So, you know. Uh, I, I threw that out as, you know, I attempted to pick my songs with that in mind and then threw it out. Yeah, you know what, I, I largely didn't think about it just because I didn't want to be that limited, you know, but 
you know, I, I, I did leave out maybe I'm amazed partly because it's a tough thing to sing. And also I wanted, I really kind of wanted for Beatles things. I kind of wanted I'm down in there, but I think that's a lot to ask now too. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I thought about it and didn't think about it. it you know, it, it's sort of, uh, you know, didn't want it's to come in the background. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And, you know, Paul's been pretty stubborn about keeping everything in the same key. That's right. The only time that I can remember he took the song down in key was when he did Fixing a Hole, which he did on the piano. Mm. And but otherwise, he wants to stick to the keys they were in. You know, if you've been so. playing a song on stage for, you know, 50 years in one key, um, you know, I guess he's he's a good enough musician that he can get it under his fingers in the new key. But um, it'd it'll be it'd be like another weird thing to think about that he shouldn't have to think about. You know, I mean, the, the positions will be different. Also, depending what instrument he's playing it on, but um, the positions will be different, and it, it, it would be very easy to sort of. Um, slip back into the old key because it's where your fingers mm. kind of are used to going on that song mm -hmm. um so i can understand i can understand why he wants to keep it um but you know at, at this point it, it may make sense for him to reconsider that mm. okay great choices there alan thank you okay darren you're next all right well alan's set was very much uh, kind of a fantasy uh, or several different ideas kind of combined together, making an ultimately um, uh, a dream show for a hardcore McCartney fan. I ended up putting together uh, a concept show, which actually I think somewhere in my notes here, it's a small tour. Um, it is the reunion of wings. And what I did do when I put it together was tried to knowing the poll wouldn't be anal like I would be and pick just wing songs that he would kind of venture outside of wings even though this was a wings show um hmm. I also did refer to past set lists and tried to pick songs that I knew realistically he probably would do or would be willing to do. I didn't want to get too hardcore and make it, boy, Darren would love to hear Little Lamb Dragonfly if there's no shot of him performing Little Lamb Dragonfly. So what I did do was I did make, I did refer to old set lists. I saw what they opened with like in, for example, in, in 79, um, what was what Beatle tunes was did he tend to play a lot of in more recent tours the few mm -hmm. that he did back in the days of wings I refresh my memory on those uh, because they were wings they kind of were in a way not wing songs but they were things that he performed in the wings setting you know in the past right. so, uh -huh. so basically and I wrote a little story here to set it all up Due to the absence of Linda McCartney, who died in 1998, Paul McCartney was always resistant to the idea of a reunion of wings. Without Linda, there couldn't be a wings. Um, but Paul's mind is changed when the idea is raised of doing a charity concert or small tour uh, in Linda's memory. Linda would have turned 80 on September 24th, 2021. And 2021 marked the 50th anniversary of Wings formation and the release of their first album, Wildlife. So uh, Paul decided to go with the plan for a small tour and he contacted most of the surviving members of mm -hmm. Wings and asked him to come on for this brief reunion anniversary tour, which would be called On Linda's Wings. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, for the reunion, Paul naturally would play bass and guitar uh, and piano. Denny Lane, of course, would be there and he'd be the rhythm guitarist and play some bass and piano. Lawrence Juber would be the lead guitarist and both Denny Sywell and Steve Holly would play drums. So Wings would be a two drum band for this tour. Uh, besides Linda, Henry McCullough and Jimmy McCullough, of course, are no longer with us. 
Um, so if Paul was able to get them in the band, that would really be something pretty fascinating. Um, missing would be Joe English, who is no longer in the music business, and Jeff Britton, who wasn't contact, because I just don't think that, I mean, those I think are like, you know, completely different worlds. Jeff Britton. He wasn't. He wasn't there that long enough anyway. Yeah, right. And, and of course, if I were doing the thing, I'd invite everybody. Uh, so I could, you know, you don't, you look at it like, don't, you know, Paul's not approaching this as you would approach it, Darren. And um, Jeff Britton wouldn't get, wouldn't, wouldn't be, wouldn't be rung up, but it would make total sense to have both Denny Sywell and Steve Holly there. Um, and, you know, how many bands of two drummers? So, you know, there's a, there's plenty of them. All right. So uh, joining the reunited wings would be veteran McCartney keyboardist Wicks, because you'd need a keyboard player there for the whole thing. Uh, and I'm thinking of um, when, when I when I put this together, I was thinking of when uh, a number of the early slash original members of Santana reunited about maybe five years ago or within the past five years. And there were a couple of current members of Santana who were part of the band because you need a bass player. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you needed a, another percussionist. Um, no, bass player and yeah, percussion. So some of the more contemporary people were involved. And in this case, Paul needing a keyboard player, uh, Wix was the obvious choice to be part of this show. Uh, almost the entire set list would be wing songs, but not everything. So, um, because wingspan is wingspan, but there's plenty of pre and post wing songs on that. So I True. took that into consideration. And Paul just couldn't possibly do a show without doing Hey Jude, even if it's a wings uh, centric <laughs> show. So, all right, everything opens up. And I wanted to avoid the obvious opener, but you know, I, this is, you know, there's nothing that that explosion at the beginning of Wings Over America for me is one of my favorite Wings moments, Venus and Mars rock show. Mm -hmm. But I didn't I broke Jet off from that opening medley. So this tour will open with Venus and Mars and a shortened version of rock show, because when Paul did resurrect rock show and I don't remember what tour it was within the past 10, 15 years. It was sort of a truncated yeah. version of Rock Show. It's like the single was. Yeah, sort of that. So that's what we start with. Venus and Mars into Rock Show, quickly into Junior's Farm. And then into a, uh, uh, yes? You could have Jeff Britton come for a guest spot in Junior's Farm. This is true. This is true. <laughs> for one song <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> uh, after Junior's Farm, let me roll it which would, if it's going to be a Wings reunion, that's one of the no-brainer songs because it's a fixture in his tour these days. So Venus and Mars, Rock Show, short version. Junior's Farm, Let Me Roll It, Jet. Taking his voice into consideration, which I did do in the way I put the set together, and I tried to put this together in a way that Paul would do it with his current shows. From the rockers, it slows down a little bit. 20 Flight Rock would come next after Jet. Then Paul goes to the piano to do Lady Madonna, which Wings performed in 70s, you know, the mid 70s. And then, mm -hmm. even though this is a Linda centric show, remembering uh, that he's married now to Nancy, My Valentine would be the next song that he would do after Lady Madonna. And he's at the piano. Paul would always group the piano songs together a bit, pick it up a bit tempo wise and bring wings back into the picture from my Valentine into 1985. And then Paul could take a break with the vocals at this point and put the spotlight on Denny Lane as they do go now. And time to hide. So Denny would get a couple of lead vocals there where Paul could rest his voice and then it comes back to wings with letting go. And now we're going to kind of get the acoustic stuff rolling. Uh, I've just seen a face again, a Beatles tune that wings did back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. into Blackbird, same thing. Then into Bluebird, hmm. which I could see Paul making a, 
you know, kind of a joke or a quip about doing Blackbird and Bluebird and then repeating that same quip at every show that he does during this tour. <laughs> uh, so they go from I've just seen a face to Blackbird to Bluebird. And then time for the band to take a break and the spotlight goes on Lawrence Juber, who does a solo acoustic listen to what the man said. Uh, because I thought that to be a song that Paul wouldn't attempt to sing today. And being that, again, in the uh, it, taking the opportunity of having other musicians who could take the center stage and give a break, LJ gets a solo acoustic thing, which is his thing, the solo acoustic music. Uh, and then LJ then does a solo acoustic Maisie. Mm. Okay. Nice. You know, Paul, Paul has done Listen to What the Man Said in recent so years. No, I know that. It's not a song he does that often, though, and I thought oh, that no. would be one that he probably wouldn't attempt today, but it's a Wings. It's a number one. It's a big part of Wings, so what better way to do it than Lawrence do a solo version? He did it <laughs> on his One Wing album. Uh, right. So, and then into Maisie, which uh, is... It's a Lawrence Juber song from Wings, and it gives you, you know, another opportunity for Lawrence to shine. Here's a song that may or may not should have been released. Well, here's mm -hmm. this moment to, you know, be right smack in the middle of a wing set. Uh, band comes back out. They do Coming Up. And at this point, I realized, all right, I haven't hit on a few albums here. And you got to hit on band, uh, Back to the Egg, being that you've got Lawrence and Steve Holly in the band but i could very easily see paul passing over london town and wildlife for no other reason i could just see him not worrying too much about hitting on every single album uh but back to the egg it would be hard for him to ignore that in this in this show so after coming up which is from that era anyway getting closer and then another break for denny lane to come up front and do again and again and again before, and I didn't make a note here, I thought Denny could also sing the lead on Seaside Woman. It is, oh. you know, a, sort of a tribute. It is a tribute to Linda. Uh, so Seaside Woman, maybe with Denny singing the lead, um, coming after again and again and again. And then this pace slows down a bit. Paul goes to the piano out of Seaside Woman. He does My Love. And maybe I'm amazed. As much as, again, the voice is an issue, that would be the perfect place in a Linda tribute show to have maybe I'm amazed show up. And he's at the piano. That'll then go into the long and winding road. And uh, then uh, now we get to start winding things up. The big uh, one of the big wings finales, Live and Let Die. Uh, they blow the stage up. And then they do Band on the Run, and the show comes to a close with Get Back because of all the Get Back stuff. So a little reality in there. Encore, uh, they come back out, they do Let Him In, and Hey Jude. Leave the stage, everyone wants more. They come back out, final two songs. I saw her standing there, and it ends with Mull of Kintyre. Hmm. Hmm. and everyone goes home and Darren's very happy and then the alarm clock rings and I wake up and that's the end of the dream of the Wings reunion show called On Linda's Wings a tribute to Linda and a celebration of Wings' 50th anniversary and I didn't realize when I did this that Linda actually was, old, is older, was older than Paul hmm I didn't realize that because I wanted to check on the date and saw that she would have been 80 and the same year that Wings would have been 50. Bingo, there's where I'm going. I'm going Wings with my fantasy set list. Interesting thing. You know, I when I thought of my dream McCartney concert, I didn't think about who the musicians would be in his band. Mm -hmm. It was strictly just the songs I was thinking about. But um, it sounds to me, Darren, like you've been listening to a lot of Wings Over America and the 1979 UK tour, because no, well, almost every single thing that, that you mentioned there, it's not a criticism. I mean, it's no, really, no, it's combining the two together with a few notable exceptions. 
Well, well, how I looked at it was that Paul does tend to be predictable. And a lot of people mm. who go see every show and every tour have complained sort of about that. I'm kind of getting tired of hearing this. I'm getting tired of hearing that, you know, and boy, I wish he would do Live It a Little Lamb Dragonfly. I wish he would do I Lie Around. I even thought of something mm-hmm. like I Lie Around yeah. for a Denny Lane song. And I thought, no, that's pushing it. Uh, I, I do want to keep my dream set sort of a little rooted in reality. So I did find myself referring back to the Wings Over America album and the set list of Wings, what they played in 79, to see what what Paul was willing to do. What I didn't do and I was going to also research, uh, look at was the tracks he picked for the Pure McCartney album because that was supposed to be what Paul envisions as being his some of his best songs. Uh, following the Beatles and you know um, and I don't know why I just really sensed that Paul would pass over London Town in its entirety I, I don't have a reason why I, I did think about you know he should probably do with a little luck but I didn't I, didn't, I don't know how that would work on stage you know especially he did with, try with he did try with his band you know yeah. they didn't perform it ever but it he wasn't happy with the results yes i thought you know what i think i have a i just couldn't look at london town as being the thing that would just fall through the cracks uh and i didn't want to be obvious with this and make sure i picked every song you know every album at least one song from every album because Mm. a lot of times musicians don't do that they don't worry about things like that it's what flows in the show and if it means half a band on the run and nothing from london town so be it you know, so it was a little fantasy and a little rooted in reality. I didn't know if something like this, if they would do Be- Mull of Kintyre, because didn't Denny sell? Denny sold his it. publishing rights so to Paul. Is that a sticky situation there, or is that a nice way of maybe reminding everyone that it was also a Denny song? Mm-hmm. You know, the album comes out, the songwriting credit, I imagine, would still say, even. Oh, it, would, it still does. It still does. Even though he sold his, they don't change songwriting credits when. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So, look at the records. Look at the McCartney lyrics book. Denny Lane's name is in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure, okay. and I wasn't going that bonkers researching everything that I was going to, you know, start checking out songwriting and publishing and whatnot. I thought Seaside right. Woman was a definite. That was the curveball. That was the temporary secretary of this tour, mm. because also it was Linda's song. And um, I thought Maisie would be a nice way to give Lawrence, you know, in his little set of the show, a wing song that was like a bone thrown to LJ. So interesting that, you know, you've got Denny Sywell in there. And did you have anything from Ram? I know you avoided wildlife, right? No, re- no reason why. And, and I'd even say so much and maybe a little bit of an oversight. It just slipped my mind. I was going to I was thinking too many people. Uh, hmm. would be the song if there was going to be one that I could see him realistically doing um, maybe Eat at Home right. but then I thought alright that's me being obvious about let's try to cover all the bases I'm not doing I'm not covering all my bases in this set so I kind of looked beyond and passed Ram it's a pity okay. that this is on the bottom didn't include um when the red red the red red robin goes bob bob bobbing along because then you could have included that with blackbird and bluebird he may oh, very well own the publishing to it i don't know <laughs> i've done a full hour on my show every little thing of just bird songs and you know that paul loves birds and he's got you know single pigeon and jenny oh, yeah, wren yeah. and on the wings of a nightingale and you know right he could do a whole set of just bird songs i right. was thinking Paul should also play that bum note that's in Bluebird that's on the Band on the Run album, that acoustic guitar part. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Dun, dun. No. <laughs> There's a bum note in there. Dun, dun, okay. dun, singing Bluebird. Isn't there on the recording, the studio recording, it sounds like somebody hits a clunker and they left it. Hmm. I have to listen again. Sounded okay to me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Darren. I especially love how it ends with Bullock and Tire. Yeah. At your concert. That's a very interesting ending. There. And they get bagpipes. They'll have a ba- they'll have a uh, bagpipers will come out. 
Yeah, very Thank good. Well, unlike your list, Darren, mine has no reality based on it whatsoever. <laughs> well, we know that you don't actually uh, you don't actually exist in reality. You sort of live in your own this, little. This is true. <laughs> but um, I had a concept for my dream McCartney concert, and also I should uh, mention that I didn't do the set list in order. It's just I just put together all the songs I'd like to see him do. So um, my concept is that these are all songs that Paul has never done live ever yeah. mm. with the Beatles, Wings, his solo music at all, ever. <laughs> um, yeah, and I have uh, some Beatles songs, some songs he wrote for other people, for other artists um wings solo you name it so i'm just going to start by uh mentioning the songs he wrote for others i thought i would include a couple of songs in there i thought it would be really nice for him finally after all these years to perform a world without love hmm. <laughs> um you know paul's one of those rare uh individuals who's had number one records that he's never done live before and this is one case with Peter and Gordon where it went to number one. Paul's never done any of the Peter and Gordon stuff live ever. You might say in the Beatle years, you could understand that, but in his solo career, he can pick and choose whatever he wants to. Um, and I also mentioned On the Wings of a Nightingale because I think it's one of the best songs he ever wrote for any other artist and was so perfect for the Everly Brothers. Hmm. And um, yeah, I wanted those two songs in there he has performed Come, Come and Get It, I think, in Europe. This is back around, around 2010 or so. Um, but I wanted those two songs in there. Of the Beatles songs that I picked, um, three are Paul songs, one's a John song. I picked Rocky Raccoon because I thought that would be a great, a great fun song to do in the middle of the show. It's an easy song to do chord-wise. It's not that difficult to sing. I wasn't even thinking about Paul's voice throughout this whole right. thing. It's just really what I wanted him to do. And I know that there was a survey done a few years ago amongst Beatles fans. What Beatles song would you like Paul to do that he's never done live before? And for that one survey, Rocky Raccoon was number one. Wow. I also put in there, uh, you'll be surprised, Maxwell Silver Hammer. Mm. Maybe because I think that it's a favorite of Paul's. And I think he would have a big kick out of doing that one live. You know, um, he has and then, performed it live, but he has read the lyrics live during his poetry readings. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have the anvil with him at the poetry reading? No, 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 no anvil. <laughs> would have been great for effect there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I. I thought I'd put that in there. I think a lot of people would be shocked, you know, considering the fact that we've known for a long time that it was not a favorite among, well, for John especially. And I've heard the other Beatles, whether they didn't like the song or whether they complained that it was rehearsed too much. Um, that's one song that always gets pointed out as being not a favorite from the other Beatles. And then, might be cool to do Maxwell Silver Hammer going into Oh Darling, which, you know, mm -hmm. a few songs back to back from Abbey Road. Great vocals there on the album. I'm not going to worry about Paul's vocal. Just want to see him do it once live. And then there's one John song that I put in there. And there's, there's a lot of Beatles songs that I think Paul would get a really big kick out of doing that either John wrote or George wrote. And I put Tomorrow Never Knows because mm. I know that Paul is very fond of that song. Um, <laughs> I seem to remember, I don't know why this sticks out in my head, but when he did the concert for New York and he saw Will Lee there talking about the Fab Foe, his Beatles tribute band, and all the Beatles songs that they do, what does Paul say to him? Do they do Tomorrow Never Knows? <laughs> like that's the one that he wants to is most curious about would they do tomorrow I never knows but i could hear him you know i could hear him sing that song and he's very proud of his part with the tape loops uh being used in that song 
So, and yet I could hear him do, and your bird can sing. You know, I think that would be a very cool song to do, but I didn't put that one in there. Um, Tomorrow Never Knows made the list. I also put in here, again, what a pipe dream this is. Songs from the other Beatles from their solo careers. I picked one from each. Since Paul has said how much he likes Beautiful Boy from John, I thought it'd be nice if he did that one. Yeah. You know, I could, I could easily hear Paul do the songs from John that are beatle like woman, that kind of thing. But he has mentioned Beautiful Boy. He cited that one. So would be nice to hear him do that. Kind of tough to know which George song I would pick. I picked Blow Away. It's a really tough thing to, to go through George's catalog. And, uh, you know, the, the very spiritual stuff that George does, I don't know if Paul's all that comfortable with it, even though he is a spiritual person and meditates. But I think Blow Away has a very beatle sound to it. I think it, it could fit for, for Paul. And here's one that, oh, my God, I, I would kill to hear. Six o'clock. Mm. yeah he wrote it for Ringo yeah. wouldn't it be nice yeah to represent Ringo with that mm -hmm. one song That's and good. as much as I like uh you know pretty much everything that Paul's written for Ringo six o'clock is still the best among all of them as far as I'm concerned um I mentioned before that Paul has three number one songs in his career at least in America the billboard charts that he's never done live before with a little luck is one of them um, Uncle Albert Admiral Halsey is another one of them. And Say, Say, Say is the third one. There's no excuse for not performing a song that hit number one. So those three songs made my list. I also uh, put in there Monk Very Moon Delight. <laughs> uh, yes. Again, not thinking about the voice might be wise if you waited towards the end of the concert <laughs> to do a song like that and oh darling for that matter um you know one of my favorite vocals ever a screaming vocal you really don't get much better than that song because his vocals like that so rough and edgy for the full song which on the album is over five minutes of just that um one of you mentioned take it away i think it was alan mm -hmm. um top 10 single here Mm -hmm. in the u.s that would be a great live song to do and if he had a brass section a horn section mm -hmm. um like he did in 75 76 and he was doing again when he was doing uh like the egypt station uh dates um that would sound great um he's never done no more lonely nights <laughs> that's a great power mm -hmm. bower there that made the top yeah. 10 here in the u.s He's never done spies like us. I was just okay, which say I that. think, yeah. Um, again, any of these songs that were huge hits, I just don't see why how he could avoid it. Spies like us, except when he's screaming at the end, is a very easy song to sing, and it'd be a very, very good rocking, edgy song for the band to do. And as Alan mentioned, this is one of the songs in my top three of songs from Paul that he's never done live before that I wish he would do. And that's the world tonight. I do think that would sound great. Um, and I'm also thinking primarily of his, his band of the last 20 years. Um, such a great buildup to when he screams in the chorus. Um, that song is tailor-made for a live performance. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to, especially since I've been such a champion of press to play, try to find some song, although Stranglehold I think would work well. I'd like to see one of his ballads performed live before. And since he's done Only Love Remains a couple of times live, um, I picked Footprints. Because mm -hmm. kind of like if you're thinking about so many of his tours where in the middle he does an acoustic set that works rather well, whether he's alone with the acoustic or with his band like Wings Over America. Footprints is really a very pretty song. You know, if you love Bluebird as an acoustic tune, question for Ken. you know yeah uh when did he um excuse me sorry had to grab something here um uh he performed uh, which song did you say he has performed a couple of times right before only love remains not on when a tour he he did it, 
there was a TV show and there was another performance that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but he's done it twice in front of a live audience. He did it and at you the can, Royal you Variety can... Command. I think that might be the TV show you, you're mentioning. Um, okay. And you can, you can watch that on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. But there was a second time that he did it as well. So, okay. yeah. I didn't, I did if, you, if you're going to be a stickler, no, he's never done it on tour, but these special, uh, you know, moments when he did it. Um, I think because this is a, you know, a kick A song, and I love when Paul gets behind the piano and does stuff like Lady Madonna in 1985, I would think Get On The Right Thing would be a great song to do live. Um, yeah, that's a that really good band. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good band song. You know, whether you think of it as Red Rose Speedway or it originated during Ram, um, I think Get On The Right Thing would sound great. Um, usually, whenever I think of my top three songs that Paul's never done live before, uh, my number one choice is the one I'm about to mention, and that's Helen Wheels. You know, that's such a great rock song with that riff. You know, it's very much you could hear his band today doing that song. You know, I don't know why he's chosen never to do that one from the Wings days. He's done Jet to death. <laughs> you know, I'm glad that he's brought Junior's Farm back in recent years. But Helen Wheels, he's never done. I don't understand it. But um, it's such a great rock and song right there. And, you know, I know some people are kind of mixed about this as far as rockers go. But I love Girl School a lot. You know, I think uh, that's a very easy song for him to sing very edgy good rock song i can hear his band today doing that as well as helen wheels i'm also thinking about what would work well as a, a band song and his current band um one of the songs that i always wish, wished was a single from paul is cafe on the left bank and i put that one in there since you can't put um i've had enough which was done in 79 on the uk tour um, and like Alan, yes, Little Lamb Dragonfly, you know, one of the greatest of all of his acoustic songs. Um, I really think it's brilliant and a masterpiece and one of his greatest melodies and the whole arrangement that he did with Wings for that on Red Rose Speedway is just tremendous. Um, and I'm also thinking if, you, if there's any kind of a format in my mind, if you're used to an acoustic set somewhere in the middle, just like Bluebird, like I mentioned before, um, or I've just seen a face, those acoustic songs, Little Lamb Dragonfly would fit right in, as would, since you mentioned Pure McCartney there, um, Darren. Um, and I found it an interesting collection because I think what Paul said was if he was going to be in his car driving, these are the songs he'd like to hear. Um, Don't Let It Bring You Down is one of my favorite of nice. the acoustic McCartney songs. Um, can hear Paul sing that with the falsetto voice. Can easily hear him do that now. Um, a song that would be great to open with just because of the title alone and it's a great rock song. So glad to see you here. Um, that would be really cool. As would We're Open Tonight, which I didn't include in here. You know, I love the idea that you said, Darren, about Venus and Mars Rock Show, which to me is you know, to me, the greatest opening song that Paul's done um, in his tours right? with Jet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but so glad to see you here would be pretty cool to do. Um, ballroom Dancing, another one that Alan mentioned. I've always, I've always hungered for Paul to do that one live and one that I always wished would have been made a single. Such a perfect song. Great screaming vocals from Paul on that. Can you handle it today? I don't know, but it should have been done live at some point. Um, you know, when you're talking about Tug of War and Pipes of Peace, I'd love to hear one of those two songs live. And I just think Pipes of Peace would work better as a live song with the piano in there and the flutes and like a children's chorus. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the whole arrangement of Pipes of Peace. I just think as a live song, um, between Tug of War and Pipes of Peace, you should have one of those two. It's a shame he hasn't done either one of them 
live. Um, it's funny you mentioned flying to my home. That's that's such a great song, Alan. But I also think as far as rockers go, long leather coat. <laughs> wow. That one I love a lot. Yeah. Um, from the Hope of Deliverance um, CD single. That's a great rock song. Another one that I love because it has so many different sections in the song, which Paul is so adept at doing and screaming in the chorus. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love to hear that one. Um, I also put in there of the more recent from the 90s on up, um, Beautiful Night, I think would be a great live song. Uh, too much rain, I think, in the acoustic set would be very nice. Good, yeah. um, another acoustic song, "Early Days," I think, uh, and Paul's, you know, very fond of that particular song and the message he's trying to bring in it. Um, "Dominoes," I would put in there. Um, "Do it now," because it's an expression that his father said to him, just like "Put it there" was. Um, Another bonus cut from uh, from Paul's solo career from um, Egypt Station. I love Frank Sinatra's party. I think that could work really yeah. well live. Um, and like you, Alan, I put Seize the Day. Since I mentioned Beautiful Night, now that I think of it, if I could have him close uh, his concert with uh, his final encore, it probably would, probably would be Beautiful Night, I put the back seat of my car and I thought at the very end, the band leaves, it's just Paul on piano and he does the end of the end. That's too heavy. Kind of a depressing song. It is, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but it's a very personal song from him and it's just him alone. It would be even more personal with him alone on the piano. And um, I just think that song is one of the undiscovered masterpieces of Paul's yeah. solo career. So all these songs are songs he's never done live before. That would be my dream. There's a treasure trove of songs he's never done live. And, um, you know, as much as I wish that it would be, and this is, as you can tell, heavy solo McCartney here. Um, I certainly wouldn't mind if there were Beatles songs in there that he's never done live songs that John wrote songs that George wrote, you know, we've heard something <laughs> for a long time. Now we've heard a day in the life, certain songs like that. Um, but there's, there's so much to pick from and that's, you know, part of the joy in discovering this catalog is that there's so many riches there and, uh, and Paul's still giving them. Mm -hmm. Nice. What he ought to do as well <clears throat> is on this tour, he should sort of pop in unannounced to one of the sort of downtown avant-garde spaces in Manhattan and do Rinse the Raindrops loop in the entire first Fireman album. <laughs> Maybe and, something off McCartney okay. too. But... <laughs> How about Queen of Crore as an encore? Hmm. I'd be so into that. <laughs> Including the shooting the bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would be really nice. I hadn't thought about this. It'd be nice if we could see Paul play drums live, which he did on Unplugged for Ain't No Sunshine. Hmm. But, you know, for someone that loves to play the drums and he's done it so much on his solo music, you know, and certainly on the Band on the Run album, it'd be really nice to see him do that. I mean, I would kill to hear Karina Kroor and hear him do all the percussive Shooting stuff on that. <laughs> I would. Kind of do it like <laughs> Edgar Winter playing Frankenstein. Have Paul running around, drums, shooting bow and arrows off. and There you, you go. Have him, you know, again, <laughs> again, back to the, to the Ram sessions, you could have him do, um, well, okay, you could have him do Karina Kroor and then A Woman O Y and bring the pistol <laughs> that way he can you know do the whole arsenal and then then go okay. into live and let die <laughs> hmm. these are all just tremendous shows and um i'm sure many of the people who 
who listen and watch the show have come up with their own dream concerts, by all means, hey, please write to us. I'd love yeah. to see your set list or if you have a concept. I know that it's been really popular and I'm kind of surprised that, that Darren didn't bring this up because I know that you do like when artists do complete albums. Mm. You know, like Steely Dan that. has done. I, thought of it, I don't know. I just don't see McCartney doing it. I don't know why. Oh, he's even said that he would be kind of against that whole idea. I think part of the reason why is because it would be so predictable. You'd know every song in advance of what yeah. he's going to do. Yeah, I mean, certain artists, you could, I think, pull it off. I th You know, Yes does that very well. You know, complete mm. albums. Certain artists, it just doesn't, you, you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want to give up a huge chunk of a McCartney show to hear. Uh, even my favorite album by him, Band on the Run. Mm -hmm. There's so many other places you'd want to see him go. Um, right. You know, and at this point in his career, I, I yeah, I didn't. In a three hour set, he can still go lots of places. One, one of my potential things, and this would get around the predictability thing for full album shows. It wouldn't, it would really be half albums. So he could choose from and, offer different combinations on different nights. Um, all of his white album stuff uh, as one part of it, side two of Abbey Road, and there you could get him, you know, you want him to do a George song, you could do Here Comes the Sun, um, mm -hmm. not to mention some John's John stuff. Um, yeah. And then a side of Ram, a side of Band on the Run, Flowers in the Dirt, McCartney 3, either a side or the whole album. And if he juggles those around, you wouldn't necessarily know what you were going to get on a given night. That was one of my potential concepts, but I thought it would be better to go with individual songs, finally. I like that idea a lot. Mm. You know, I often wonder to myself, you know, you've, you've heard Paul say that when it comes to choosing the material, he puts himself in the mind of the fan. What would they like to see him do? But I would love to hear what Paul would like to do himself, mm -hmm. you know, and not even consider the fans. You know, these are songs that he might be into, whether it's, you know, a huge hit that he's had or something like Check My Machine if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how obscure it is, maybe he'd be into doing Krina Core. You know, he'd probably think, oh, the audience wouldn't want, want me to do that. But <laughs> I'd be curious to know what he would want to do. Don't think about the audience. You be the individual here. This is your moment. This is what you want to do. And that would just, whether you like his selections or not, that alone would be pretty fascinating to me anyway. Although at current prices, it's good that he's thinking about the audience. Yes. <laughs> all right. This has been a great conversation here. And uh, like I said to all of our, our listeners and viewers, please chime in. Let us know what your thoughts are on this particular subject. Of course, we know he's not going to listen to our ideas. Well, who knows if he if he'll listen or never. not, but he won't do them. <laughs> But um, it's just for fun that we're doing this anyway. So why don't we go around the horn here and give the folks some information about what we're doing right now and how uh, they can get in touch with us. Darren, let's start with you. Well, right now, I'm just sitting here. So that's what I'm doing at the <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Uh, um, WFUV you could catch me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights at 10 and Saturday afternoons starting at 1. Uh, WFUV is in New York City, 90.7 FM. Um, uh, 90 I, I don't know what the situation is with HD radio today, uh, if anybody hmm. really ever pays attention to it, but there is an HD2 channel, uh, 90.7 FM HD2. Um, and then, of course, you can listen anywhere you want, wherever you are. You can listen online, WFUV.org or uh, listen on our app. If you want to uh, get in touch with me, um, Facebook, go to Facebook. I have two pages. Uh, search my name and one or both of them will turn up. Uh, join me at both. 
I'll in, if you, even if you don't join me at both, join at one. I'm going to invite you to the other. Uh, we keep in touch there. Uh, or if you want to email me directly, it's Darren DeVivo at WFUV.org. And I guess that's it. Yep. The past Saturday, I did my 38th anniversary show, which, be believe it or not, um, for about half the show, it completely slipped my mind. And I made no mention of it, uh, that it was my anniversary. Took <laughs> And I wrote it down to boot. And it still slipped my mind, so um, mm -hmm. so that was. But that was fun. That was uh, that was this past Saturday. So that's that's that. And we will see that's them. What there. happens? That's what happens, Darren. It's the brain drain. What brain? The brain's draining. All right, Alan, you're next. Okay, um, you can get in touch with me through Facebook, either at Alan Cozen or Alan Cozen Remixed. Um, you can write to all of us at by email at um, things we said today radio show at gmail.com. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at, um, at things we said fab. And we have two Facebook pages uh, things we said today, just plain or things we said today, Beatles radio fans. I should also mention the McCartney Legacy Facebook page, um, which Adrian really runs. And uh, um, it has all of the uh, pre-ordering information. He's put links to Amazon in basically every country, not every country, but a lot of them, and um, Barnes and Noble and some other places too. Um, and uh, I, I think he'll, continue adding to that as we get more links um you know and there are other things going on on that page too uh periodically we put up some uh you know something that we've just finished writing about and want to uh, do a, a a synopsis of without giving too much way but um for instance um, you know part book two is going to have towards the very beginning um the sessions for the mcgear album and when we talked to Mike McCartney, um, we did a piece, which is you probably, if you scroll down, you can still find it on the McCartney Legacy Facebook page. It's sort of an interview with him, some of the interview that, that we did. Um, so, you know, just like that. And, uh, you know, again, write us, send us your set lists if you want at things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. Ah, very good. Is that the audio of the interview with Mike McCartney or is it a transcript? No, no, just uh, we, we wrote it as a, a piece of prose with quotes. <laughs> okay. All right, very good. As for me, if you want to get in touch with me directly, my email address is everylittlething at att.net. Um, on my YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels Radio, I just did a video with the two guys, the two co-hosts of Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast, which is all about the solo careers of Paul, uh, the solo career of Paul. And that's Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols. And we had a very interesting conversation about what has been Paul McCartney's creative peak, covering his entire career, Beatles through today, getting a lot of different answers. And it was a very healthy debate right there. And uh, kind of like what we just did here, there are no rules. Um, in that particular show, if you want to pick a specific year of Paul's career or a group of years, a cluster of years, a decade, whatever, whether you think his Wings period was the best, whether his solo career, maybe his most recent releases, or just stick to the Beatles stuff, maybe late Beatles, that's up to you. And we had a great conversation about that, which you should check out. And also, uh, just last night, I did another show with Tom and Andy and uh, Dylan Seavey who is a drummer and guitarist from Nashville and songwriter as well. And he's been a guest on my YouTube channel as well. And we did a show on our top three unreleased Paul McCartney songs from his solo career, unreleased so far. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of stuff has been bootlegged through the years that eventually turned up on the archival box sets or maybe CD singles like put it there had uh, mama's little girl and uh, same time next year from the wings days so a lot of stuff that's been bootlegged on stuff like cold cuts 
or um, Pizza and Fairy Tales, if you're familiar with those um, bootlegs. They've turned up eventually, commercially, as a McCartney release, but there's still quite a lot, and so much we don't even know about, but there's still quite a lot that's out there that remains unreleased so far. And eventually, I think the ones we picked are probably going to end up being released anyway. But it'll be interesting to hear what those three guys came up with, as well as myself, as far as stuff that the songs that Paul has uh, written and recorded that he's never released so far. So that's on my YouTube channel, Ken Michaels Radio. Please subscribe to that. On Talk More Talk, our last show from last week, we did an entire show about what contributed or what we believe contributed to Ringo's decline in the 70s in record sales after Goodnight Vienna. He was on the greatest ride from 1971 through 75 with hit singles. And then after that, with Ringo's Rodeg of You're Not Doing That Well, um, A Dose of Rock and Roll was a number 26 hit, which is still not bad. It's top 40. After that, everything really kind of tanked. And um, we talk about that. We speculate why that was. We've got a lot of different answers about that as well. Another healthy debate right there. Um, again, the show is Talk More Talk a solo Beatles video cast. We do shows every two weeks and we do them live on our YouTube channel, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, not quite sure what the next show is gonna be on at this moment. Actually, we do have a plan for it, but it's not definite. <laughs> but it's always an interesting conversation, whatever we do. Uh, if you can, please watch the show. And, uh, and then it stays on our YouTube channel. And we're on all different platforms from Spotify to iHeartRadio um, and Podbean like we are and iTunes. Uh, again, that's Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. And don't forget my website is KenMichaelsRadio.com. There's lots of archival interviews, strictly audio, that are on there that I've done in the last 20 years or so. All people connected with the Beatles in some way. Alan's on there, for example, when his book Got That Something was first released, we did an interview and that's on there. Um, Alan's also on my YouTube channel, as is Darren. You know, all my podcasters, fellow podcasters and co-hosts are on there. So if you can, check that out, Ken Michaels Radio for the YouTube channel, KenMichaelsRadio.com for my website. So this has been fantastic. I love talking about this. Want to hear more from the fans? Thanks to all the new subscribers to our YouTube channel. And to anyone who hasn't done so yet, please subscribe. Okay. Right. Thanks so much for tuning in. And for Darren DeVivo and Alan Posen, I'm Ken Michael saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. And seize the day.